Do you spend hours trying to keep your smart home from being a smart ass? You're not alone. And that's why in today's video, I'll be bringing you six home automation features I dub my favorite because sometimes we just have to take a step back and admire the results. In today's video, I'll bring you hardware centric automations featuring smart things connected and Google Home. I'll share workarounds I've implemented to save money or adapt to a changing environment such as losing web core. If you like home improvement, stick around until the end to see a glimpse of my other home modifications. Connected allowed me to retrofit my old Bosch alarm system, integrating sensors into Samsung SmartThings. It's also compatible with Home Assistant, Hubitat, or OpenHab. I have a 16-channel kit which went beyond the requirements for my factory alarm, largely because some zones were wireless which could not be integrated. The zones can be set up as inputs for existing hardwired sensors. All the zones are configurable via the SmartThings app after connecting them to your network. These zones can be used to trigger a 3-volt relay. I've used these outputs to trigger four different relays. Three of them interface with my eWand blind remote, and another one is connected to a doorbell chime transmitter. I've had the connected kit since 2019 launch, and they are very reliable. The kit has paid for itself given the cost of wireless sensors and battery upkeep. Because it allowed me to use existing devices and save me money while leaving room to grow, I've listed this integration first. When you think home automation, it's impossible not to consider window treatments. After installing the connected panels, I picked up six e-wands in 2019. The e-wand is a wand that fastens to the top of your blinds and replaces the original wand. They're quite universal, and the two kits allowed me to treat all the windows in my lower level. I received two remotes with my kits. One of them is in the original form among my scene controllers, and the other I disassembled for integration into the connected panel. There are several competitors out there now, and even the e-wand is sold with native Z-Wave, but at almost double the price. These blinds have been humming, quite literally, for over four years, adjusting three times a day without issues. If you go this route, I highly suggest rechargeable batteries as they will use six AA's each for a runtime for about six months. I've wanted to hardwire them for a while now, but I just don't want to mess with success. I tapped into three buttons on the second remote with my connected panel, which drives three relays. I integrated into the open, close, and favorite buttons. Connected brings these relays into SmartThings as buttons you can leverage anywhere. Google Home, My Action Tiles Automation Panels, and Harmony all communicate to virtual switches for these buttons. The results are both frugal and priceless. Hey Google, open blinds. I did recently order this SwitchBot blind tilt kit from Kickstarter and will be integrating into my bathroom blind soon. I'd rather be making mods or videos about them, but let me know if you're interested in that. Many of us had Wi-Fi thermostats before getting into all things automation, which makes sense given their return on value and cool factor. I picked up an Ecobee in 2018, which I felt was superior than Honeywell or other options largely because it's data logging and reporting capabilities. I was happy to see it integrate into SmartThings when I adopted that ecosystem, but that's not what this section is about. After all, a smart home can improve your heating and cooling beyond just turning it on and off. My house was built in the 1950s and is a single zone split level. I'm thankful to have central air, but I see a 10 degree difference between the upper and lower levels season round. When I had kids, I was constantly adjusting the vents to bring the right conditioning to the right rooms. So in 2018, I invested in replacing my three vents upstairs with Keen Smart Vents. Like my blinds, these have been running over four years without much of a problem, and the four AA batteries last about a year with several adjustments per day. Keen makes a hub that can automate dampers across your house to stabilize temps, but they're native Zigbee and I've always used smart things. Back in the glory days of WebCore, I've had some pretty neat, sophisticated mappings for them, but since we lost that integration, I found I could get by with a simple schedule. There are six scenes I have to control their overall configuration. I trigger those scenes by modes, along with a host of other automations. Action Tiles allows me to override the mode, so when I'm working from home, for example, I set that mode to route all the air to my office. If you're interested in smart vents, it's worth noting that you want to be mindful of the pressure and throughput of your system. I have plenty of bandwidth for this pressure, but if you were to close all your vents to focus on cooling a single room, you should be mindful of freezing your evaporator coil, for example. With these considerations, I'm happy to own these vents and automate the scenes with this schedule. Another way my automations provide comfort is by bringing more heat where I need it for Connecticut's cold winters. 
I also like to think I saved a few dollars localizing this heat. For example, I have a heated rug under our kitchen table that turns on for mealtime. It's only 180 watts and provides warmth in the coldest part of our house. I've had a passive 600 watt wall heater made by a maze in my kids' room since they were infants in 2016. Automating a minimum threshold is a good peace of mind. And lastly, despite my central air, I picked up a quiet cool house fan in 2018. Because of automation, I was able to install it in my attic without adding an additional switch. It's controlled by a key coded action tiles button, but also automated to shut off if there's ever a fire. I have one more integration that delivers comfort on the coldest days. My father had given me a heated mattress topper. I showed my appreciation by ripping it open and tapping into the power toggle switch. With the age of auto off and safety features, it's push button, so I pigtailed a connector to a relay kit. The relays are powered by a 12 volt transformer plugged into the smart plug. SmartThings powers the relays by the smart plug in order to press and release the button. I've integrated this virtual switch to my Google Home my action tiles panels, as well as my bedroom scene controller. An automated house should give us some direction. And there is a place for active and passive notifications. Active being a spoken or texted notification, but I will largely focus on passive. As you may know, if your family doubles with kids, you will triple your laundry service. I use a passive notification to help it along. A Zeus power meter tells SmartThings when the washer is done, which turns a single recessed hue light blue. Upon opening the washer, the bulb turns off. This bulb is over my kitchen island to provide an ample ambient notification. Another passive notification prompts me to scoop my cat's poop. I've installed a door for my cat that opens up to the area underneath the stairs. I set up an access gate and door sensor, which tracks when I open the door for maintenance. Two days after changing, SmartThings turns an LED at the cat door yellow and then red on day three. I can't dismiss this notification and it's a no fail, low stress reminder to take care of my cat. SmartThings tracks only two days in an if then scenario. So I have the LED changed to yellow at 80% brightness and a second rule times a day from that level to turn red. If I open the changing door at any time, it resets to green. My last notification I wanted to share was my house chime integration. I have integrated the guard line driveway monitor into a two channel doorbell system. One doorbell transmitter has been removed from its case and fit into the guard line battery compartment. This transmitter is natively 12 volts, which the guard line powers instead of a relay. The button originally intended for the doorbell is soldered shut, so when the motion is detected, I receive a ding from the chime. This integration gets more interesting. If you did not know it, the guard line also has its own customizable notifications. So with two sensors going up my driveway, there is a distinct pattern I can differentiate from a false alert. It's a very reliable solution and the sensors go for well over a year. I can't say that about many of the motion sensors in my home. But wait, there's more. Remember, it's a two channel doorbell and I have a connected panel. So I open the second doorbell and tied it into SmartThings. This serves as a door chime for front and rear exits and is intentionally different than the driveway chime. All in all, it's a useful integration that has been very helpful, helping us feel more secure and informed. It's also a fun way to tease the family as you could trigger it from any automation or switch. I almost forgot, I do have one more voice automation that revolves around safety. My house is not very big and we used to have our toaster on a custom shelf that I had built when we moved in. As proud as I was with my first woodworking task, I hated its location. So during my kitchen remodel, I stuffed the toaster in our pantry. This surely broke code, which I don't normally do, as long as you don't look above my fireplace where I have that TV thing going on. To pacify some of the risk and to reflect some of the heat, I installed an aluminum heat shield and fiberglass barrier. From there, I knew I could automate additional safety. The toaster oven power is only on when the door is open, and if you close the door while it's drawing power, you receive an alert from Google. The pantry door was shut while the toaster was in operation. Open the pantry door to resume. No home is smart without smart lighting. Some of my favorite lighting is simply motion activated 12 volt LED strips. I love their simplicity and use them for every closet with the same method. 
an LED strip adhered around the perimeter of the door frame connected to a 12 volt motion sensor. The result is inexpensive and reliable. Likewise, I have a bathroom fan with a humidity detector. While not integrated into my hub, it's reliable at turning on the fan if you forget before jumping in the shower. I also have a host of lighting integrations built into SmartThings. At this stage of the game, I've replaced every switch in my house. I have over 30 Hue lights, always purchased secondhand because of their price, which has given me a lot of ingredients for my light recipes aided by motion, routines, and scenes. I have switches and lights when and where I need it thanks to automation. And motion sensors can save money and enable kill switches such as my lab and soldering iron. My favorite lighting automations include a bias light under my bed and a Harmony movie routine. The bed's bias uses a WCRGB controller that sets bright white during the day and a dim blue at night. It uses a motion sensor on the floor to activate. I plan to refine it as a notification light but enjoying the convenient ambience in the meantime. Finally, I have used Harmony way before SmartThings. While its interface is becoming more dated, there's nothing like holding a remote in your hand. It's also the best way i found to bring together a scene recipe for watching a movie. Hey girls, you want to watch a movie? Yes! Hmm? Where did you? I'll go up there. You forgot probably, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to wait, though. Mm. Wow, that's so cool. I love ambient lighting. In the next week, I'll be releasing a comparison between Hue and Govi's Ambilight solutions. My Govi cam is hidden, and I'm impressed with the results of such an inexpensive kit. My Hue box, on the other hand, has caused me much grief, largely around ARC and its inability to pass 4K 120Hz to my OLED. I ended up downgrading my amp from Yamaha to Denon just to leverage its dual HDMI out so the Hue play box cannot come between me and my precious FPS. That's for another video, though. I'm sorry. I do want to call out those candles though. They were battery powered and switched on by Harmony by Infrared before I got sick of replacing the batteries. So I did what any hardware geek would do and hardwired them. So not only do they provide great ambience, but they also turn off when our daughters attempt to thwart our movie night. When their door opens, the candles go out. It's symbolic, no? All right, one more quick one. I call this my glow stick. It's a two channel hue play bar built before gradient was a thing. It provides us light going up the stairs and casts a nice hue spectrum on our wall. We can't automate everything, and that's why buttons and on-screen alerts are mandatory for any smart home. I thought about making this my first section, but you can't have control panels and scene controllers without the devices first. Scene controllers rock! I have one in my first and second floor that mirror hallway lights provide yet another place to adjust blinds, hue lights, and more. Homeseer also makes an RGB scene controller that I loved with WebCore. I am still restoring operation, though, of the seven LEDs that I used to use to track motion, doors open, and other statuses. But in my bedroom, it provides a quick way to switch on my sound machine, bed bias, or the entire house off. I can do this off my iPad mini on the wall next to it, but sometimes I leave this by the bed. My final integration. I love technology, and nothing pleases a geek more than shiny screens. I've seen a lot of home dashboards, and action tiles is pretty hard to beat. You can configure your layout according to your home's design, adjust your devices, scenes, and modes. It can also integrate video feeds with relevant buttons surrounding them to act upon what you see. For example, false driveway alerts are caused by animals. I will go into the panel, and if I don't see anything in the main feeds, it's not uncommon I will see one of the side motion lights turn on. From there, I could zoom in on that side of the house. It also provides a great reference point for batteries. I have six unique panels for different use cases, and the tablets are wall-mounted and wireless charging. I'd be devastated if this integration ever left, but like the rest of my automations, they've been running nonstop. All right, I hope you got something out of today's video. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. And if you like home improvements at large, check out some of the do-it-yourselfs I have in store for you. And speaking of like, please consider hitting that button to show your appreciation. And if you want to see more, well, there's a button for that too. Hey Google, feed Sandy.